This is my Lomo Instant Wide by Lomography. This is a instant camera. We all remember Polaroids. This actually shoots Fuji Instax, which are, is newer and more popular. Uh, the, the great Instax or the great instant boom might be over, but they're all still very popular. This camera is cool because it has some functionality to it, like uh, long exposure, multiple exposure, so there's some variety in that. Uh, again, Lomography's cameras are a bit on the pricey side, but you're paying for a name and uh, the, you know, supply and demand. This one is built uh, a lot tougher than the last video, the last camera I showed you, my Diana. This one feels sturdier, heavier, it's more solid, but it's still mainly plastic. Yes, I think even the lenses are still plastic. Um, this one comes with multiple lenses, which is cool for an instant camera. You can do super wide or just, you know, wide angle, and you can do a close-up. This goes up to like 10 centimeters. You can just screw them on. There's also always fun stuff, like the, they call it the splitzer cam, or splitzer lens, which you attach it on top of the lens, and it, ha it covers half the lens up. So, Fuji Instax, as a lot of people know, came out with Instax Mini, which is roughly 3 inches by 2 inches, I think, roughly. Uh, this one is the wide, so we're shooting double this. So basically it's like putting two of these side by side. This is black and white. You can also get color here. You can uh, change the viewfinder. This viewfinder actually goes with the lens. So if you're going to pop on the, the wide angle lens, you can change the viewfinder so you can better judge what will actually come out on the picture when you look through it. There's some fun features on the back, you, some settings. So here on the right hand side, some settings, you have a flash, which is cool. You have this MX button, which is for multiple exposure for an instant film, which is kind of cool. So you turn that on and then you snap a picture and you can just keep snapping. It won't instantly eject out of the top of the camera until you're done snapping. Then you turn it off by hitting MX again and then it'll spit the film the film out uh, there's a couple notches for exposure settings so you can overexpose underexpose one notch this camera I noticed too gets some really nice especially in black and white gets some really nice milky tones but light light is an issue for this thing if we take a look at this photo um, I'm happy with the colors in this photo. I'm not so happy with the focus. That's just something you have to play with. I'll talk about more in a second. But whenever, whenever you're shooting like wide, maybe like a landscape or just off to the horizon, uh, more light is coming into that lens. See, when I, when I was getting up close to this, subject these flowers I was kind of um, and I was using the macro the close-up lens for that I think it, you kind of um, you kind of taking a, a scene a picture of a scene that doesn't require as much light uh, or you're kind of limiting the light just by the composition uh, and the lens and everything but when you're wide open or just looking at the horizon, you're letting a lot more light in. I notice it seems to, in some cases, overexpose. But that's kind of cool how you can, you can always underexpose. So, like, if it's super sunny and bright and you think, you, and you're pointing out to the distance, you're not in shade, you can always click it down a notch. There's an auto bulb. What is not shown here whoops almost dropped in is a lens cap that doubles as a remote it's a, just a real thin lens cap it sort of takes like a 
a thin watch type battery, which is kind of cool. Uh, so it operates as a remote, but the remote has also lets you take control of the long exposure. And I think that's what the B is on here if I switched it to B mode down there. So you can put it on a tripod, there's the mount. You can point it at like a waterfall or a fast moving creek. Then it, you know if you're afraid of jiggling the camera even if it's on a tripod you can use the remote to, to uh, take the picture. But because it's on bulb mode you can just open the shutter remotely and then let it go as long as you want and then hit the button again on the remote so that's kind of cool or you know if you're in the picture you want like a group picture that you're in you can just use the remote that way as well uh so that's some that's a look at my lomo instant wide uh instant camera by lomography that shoots fuji film fuji instax and you can get it in color and black and white the camera is, again, like I said, a little on the pricey side. Honestly, even for the price that you're paying for this, uh, the price you end up sinking into this hobby is really in the film. It's sort of like the same concept of printers, of home printers. You, you buy the printer for fairly cheap or reasonably priced, but you have to keep paying an exorbitant amount, amount over and over for the ink. And that's these come to about I think eh, roughly like a dollar a shot like this this is about one dollar right here so that's about it for now I'll get into more detail another time you can also see my Diana the look at my Diana camera that I made and I will see you next time